are comparing two research studies, each conducted on a different type of drug. The first study found statistically significant results, P less than 0.05. The second study found non-significant results, P greater than 0.05. As you compare the significant study and the non-significant study, is the drug from the significant study more effective than the drug in the non-significant study? And if you conclude that the probability is a measure of effectiveness, if you are trying to compare probability values, you are making a statistical mistake. Let me explain why we cannot compare p-values and why we should calculate an effect size any time we calculate p-values in a statistical test. Remember the null hypothesis. In a statistical test, the null hypothesis is measuring whether a mean difference is statistically significantly different than zero. And we establish a cutoff score, a criterion that we will accept as sufficient evidence that this mean difference is truly different enough for us to say that it was statistically significant. You could use an analogy of an amusement park ride with a sign that says, you must be this tall to ride. That is a cutoff score. Only those who exceed the cutoff are eligible to ride, no matter whether you are a foot shorter or an inch shorter than the line, you cannot ride. If you are an inch taller or two feet taller, you can ride. Being over the line is analogous to being statistically significantly different. Now again, as an analogy, we have a piece of plexiglass with a red line that is a cutoff score. We are going to compare some studies. When we compare our research studies, some findings will fall clearly short of the line. These are non-significant, whereas other studies will be clearly above the line. These studies are statistically significant. However, there will be some studies that fall only slightly short of the line, p greater than 0.05. Not enough evidence to establish that the means are statistically significantly different. For other studies, the mean difference will be slightly above the line and will be statistically significant, p less than 0.05. Remember that the probabilities get smaller as we move away from zero, larger probabilities down here, smaller probabilities as we increase. Now, if this doesn't translate precisely on the video, I need you to play along with me. The stormtrooper represents a p-value of 0.051, just short of the 0.05 cutoff line, bumping his head on the line. Luke Skywalker represents a p-value of 0.049, just slightly over this line. This mean difference is significant. This mean difference is not significant trying to compare p-values, asking whether one drug is more effective based on its statistical significance is equivalent to asking whether Luke Skywalker is taller than the stormtrooper. And we know he's a little short for a stormtrooper. But these two are pretty much the same height, regardless of their p-values. The null hypothesis concerns differences from zero. It does not compare between differences. Now, these two heights are being compared to zero. They are not being compared to each other. If you are tall enough to ride the roller coaster and your brother is not, it doesn't mean that you're significantly taller than your brother. You might be just two inches taller, but it's enough to be over that cutoff line. The p-value is not something we can compare to tell us which of you two is dramatically taller than the other. If one drug study was statistically significant and the other was not, it does not mean that the drug in the statistically significant study was effective and the other drug was not. And it doesn't mean that we can compare the p-values to say that this drug was more effective than the one in the non-significant study. They could still be pretty much equally effective. 
and this is why we need to have effect sizes. We can compare effect sizes between studies. Allow me to continue this tale of two significances with a story about comparing training programs. In the field of leadership training, there is one program which is the gold standard. It has been used for years and is widely acknowledged to improve productivity. This gold standard program was created by Smith. Smith validated his training years ago, demonstrating its effectiveness. We will call it Program A. Jones is an upstart young PhD looking to make a name for himself, and he has created a new competitor program. We will call it Program B. As part of his validation, Jones replicates Smith's original study to demonstrate that Smith's program no longer makes statistically significant improvements in productivity. Smith had originally demonstrated that workplace teams led by leaders who had been trained with his program had higher productivity. T with 78 degrees of freedom equals 2.21, P less than 0.05, statistically significant. But when Jones replicated Smith's study, Jones found something different. T with 18 degrees of freedom equals 1.06, statistically non-significant. Two studies were conducted on the same training program. One was significant, the other was non-significant. This is the point at which a naive public may grow cynical about science. These two scientists were testing the same program. One was significant, one was not. You just can't trust science to tell you the truth because science is always changing. Therefore, I'm going to go back to my social media feed, which only tells me stories that comport with what I already believe. But there is no reason to be cynical based on this study. In fact, if you just ignore the p-values and focus on the effect size, you'll discover that these two stories are telling us exactly the same thing. If we convert the t-test from Smith's original study into an effect size, we find that the Cohen's d is 0.49. Cohen's conventions would consider this a medium effect size. As for Jones's replication, we could likewise convert his t-test into an effect size. We find a Cohen's d of 0.47, slightly below the convention for a medium effect size. Essentially, these two studies are measuring exactly the same thing. But why is one significant and the other not? And the answer is sample size. Smith's study has more power to find significant differences because his sample size is larger. The 78 degrees of freedom tell us that he has 80 participants in his study, whereas Jones only had 20 participants in his study, giving us the 18 degrees of freedom. Jones only had 10 people in two groups. This is an underpowered study. It's no wonder that this study was non-significant. The non-significance was not because Jones was measuring a smaller effect size, but because his sample size was so much smaller. In fact, the effect size measured by both Smith and Jones was functionally exactly the same. We cannot compare p-values because the difference between statistically significant and statistically non-significant is not itself statistically significant. The p-values tell us only about the effects of chance they do not tell us about the size of the effect. But we can compare effect sizes, and that is why we want to report an effect size anytime we calculate a p-value in a statistical hypothesis test. <laughs>